Hello and welcome to Magrathea Build Real Worlds. This is a Necromunda build. This is, in fact, part two of the Pier Town Shore Division Precinct 13 build. The sector house for my sump enforcers. And here it is. It's a large offshore police station if you like, if you're not familiar with Necromunda. If you're familiar with Necromunda, you know who the enforcers are. If you're not familiar with Necromunda, enforcers are what stands for police in the game, one way or another. Uh, and in my campaign world and my strange mind of, I mind's eye of how I see my kind of like part of Necromunda taking place, my campaign is set in a place called Pier Town, which is uh, a settlement on the shores of the Great Sump, which is right underneath Hive Primus. Um, and it's uh, quite an unpleasant place to be. And the enforcers, they have their sector house out on, that's not really water, we call it the Sump. Um, and uh, that's what I'm building at the moment. This is, as I said, part two. I've produced most of the superstructure of this uh, fortress, of this vessel. Um, if you haven't seen that, then you need to go and see part one of this video. You might not have seen part one of this, this video because you might not have seen any of my videos yet because you haven't subscribed to this channel, which is like, where have you been for the last six months? Goodness me, go and subscribe now. Go back and at least watch part one of this video and then you'll get up to speed. If you have watched part one, then we're gonna carry on. Um, come over here and let's have a closer look at the model as it is at the moment. So here we are. This is uh, the Enforcer Sector House. Um, for those of you who have watched this already, you'll know or you might remember that it is mainly being built on a Playmobil roll-on, roll-off ferry, which is the main structure. And then I've added a whole load of structure to it. I've added this back administration tower, which comes apart in a number of pieces. This top bit is going to be the commander's cabin which has a, its own lift off roof. There's no detail inside that yet, but I am gonna look to detail in there. Then this second layer here has got uh, the water tower on it. The water tower's not stuck on because I don't think it's gonna go in the crate that I've got uh, lined up for this if the water tower's stuck on, so it's gonna have to be done separately, I think. Um, and then the rest of this structure here has got the tower and this section here is going to be a med bay. I've got to equip that as well. And then, the uh, third part, which is permanently attached to the model, has got a prison cell and what's going to be the armoury over here. Might have a couple of ready bunks in there for a couple of guys who are on duty, that kind of thing, but mostly racked up weapons and bits and pieces. Then down the front, we've got um, a pontoon out the front here. I cut out the side um, with a Dremel to get characters in and out of the pontoon off vessels like my uh, Sump Speeder. Uh, which could pull alongside and crew can disembark, that kind of thing. Um, we have the bridge of the ferry, which has become the main docking control. Um, and it's got various components and, and kind of like control and stuff there. Then uh, we can also see here the entrance archway, which is not attached because I'm going to paint this separately probably. Um, and that's got a big missing gap at the moment because I want to put a weapon system in here some way because this thing has no defences. Uh, also, halfway back, there is a staircase, set of stairs that go up and over with a control panel um, for the dock master to stand up here to guide in vessels like the Sump Rider, the converted Adeptus Mechanicus Dune Riders that I'm using as vehicles for my enforcers. Uh, and then over the back... We have a, thasma, uh, a thermic plasma generator uh, attached to the main engine room. I've got various plans for various things now. I've got to add a mechanics bay and various other stuff. So this video, he says, putting some of these bits and pieces back in place. This video is going to be about the detailing of this model and turning it into a 40k model, even more so than it is now. The big issue at the moment is I've got these very smooth modern plasticky kind of like sides to this model and it, what i've got to do is stop it looking like a kid's toy so it needs to be the superstructure needs to be clad in plating and various bits and pieces uh, made to look more grim dark 40k and fortification and less kind of ferry um and then i want to detail uh inside the admin tower 
I want to detail in the mechs bay. I want to add weapon systems and various other bits and pieces. So there's quite a lot to do in this video still. Obviously, I'm going to have to paint the whole thing and make the, the sump water and that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to do um, in this video. So hold on. I'm aiming to get this whole model done uh, eh, by the end of this video. And that will have been a two-week build. This is my largest and most adventurous build I've made for Necromunda so far. Having a lot of fun with this model. Um, apart from anything else, I think it will be look great and be really useful for games. But actually, this is a, becoming very much one of the keystones of my Necromunda campaign world, setting the tone for the whole thing. When I've done this, I want to make other stuff out on the sump. So keep watching and let's see how this develops. So one of the first things we're going to do in my campaign to get rid of these smooth plastic and Playmobil look is I'm going to add some armor plating. And uh, I've come across the uh, box set of the um, uh, Sky Shield. I've found that the, I've got a Sky Shield landing pad that I bought uh, to use on a scenery tile. Uh, for, I'm going to make a farm. I'm going to make a farm. Might actually end up out now out on the sump. What it doesn't need is these full-on armor-plated sides. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this top handrail, I think, and I'm going to stick in place these armor plates either here or up there, probably down here, because uh, then that way there they can uh, appear as crenellations on a castle. And uh, the enforcers can shoot from. So I'm going to cut away this. First of all, probably I'm gonna might be able to do it with clippers and a craft knife. If not, I'll have to use a Dremel. Um, and I'm gonna stick that in. And I do that, and I can do that over on this side as well. And there might be the odd place where I can use um, some of the ones where they're only uh, too wide too, which look pretty cool. So that's one of my first jobs that I'm gonna do with this. I've also, while I'm here, uh, been making a weapon system. Um, this is the weapon system uh, Twin Link Laz Cannon, which is pretty heavy, really, for um, a Necromunda game. I just want it to look kind of scary and imposing. Um, this is a, a Razorback Laz Cannon, a pair of Twin Link Laz Cannons, sent to me by um, uh, a, a subscriber. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, with some other CAC, because people send me their CAC now. And I've made a way that it could sit in this... Uh, um, piece of platform and rotate which is pretty neat so it not only does it go up and down it also rotates and i'm going to attach that to the underside of the entrance arch so the entrance way is going to be kind of covered by twin link las cannon so any no any baddies arriving with vehicles are going to get uh blammed by a uh, twin link las cannon it's got a relatively good arc of fire Either way round and up and down, it's going to look quite neat when it's really done and painted. Look really menacing. That's what I'm looking to go for, really, more than anything else. So that I'm going to stick on now as well. Okay, well, now, before I stick these on, I've managed to successfully cut out that handrail quite nicely. Um, I've decided that actually one of the problems... Whoops. I've decided that one of the problems with this component is it's a bit too Imperial Guardy and, and Space Marine. I'm not bothered about the skulls, that's very 40k um, but I don't want these Imperial Eagles uh, so I'm going to take those off with a little craft chisel um, they are quite similar ok so we've uh, done a couple of things here now I've added that um, armour plating from the uh, landing pad which is quite cool I've got, I was given a bunch of sci-fi plastic plates and bits and pieces. Uh, actually, these ones are from Gary at uh, um, Black Dragon Managers. Hi, Gary. And Edward, my mate Edward gave me a bunch of these like this as well. They fit quite nicely on here, so that's going to add help add to the kind of like overall texture. And if you saw my video last time, you'll see that I was talking about a great big chain that I got from an old wooden chest, which is now going to act as anchor chains into the sump they're now stuck on the side of the ship as well so we're getting there we're starting to remove this kind of full-on plastic look i've got a few more bits to add i think if i can find rivets and various things that will uh, help um with the overall texture that's what i'm looking to do 
Uh, so I'm going to keep going for a moment. Um, and then I'm going to, yeah, look at uh, that gun system. Okay, so here's the over the gate entrance gun. In place, there's the twin linked LAS gun, LAS cannon that will sit underneath that now and I can twist and turn. That's quite pretty. I'm really pleased with that. Top bit is just a vent. It's got a pin going through it all the way through, so it will twist and turn, sit nicely. That's going to look quite imposing. Rather worrying than anybody else. I now need to stick on these sides, and then that bit of there will be pretty much done. I'm going to have back ones as well. Uh, quite cool. I might put a few hanging pipes and bits and pieces under here to add a bit of texture as well. Well, I think that's going to look really, really nice. So I'm not really working on this with much of a plan today, just doing bits as it takes my fancy. But I'm thinking that it's going to work quite well on the top of the bridge. Well, I don't know how it would take the weight of this, but I really like the idea of having a crane. on the top which can spin round, pick up boats down here and then spin round and lower them down into the work bay. Also bring in supplies and that kind of thing of supply ships. So that's definitely going there. All right, well, so we're just looking for details and stuff to go on this model now. Anything that comes to mind. So it is time to go. Digging. The cack! Here's a box of fun cat details spread out on a tray so I can find little bits and pieces because I've no idea what I'm looking for to be quite honest. Um, could be all sorts of things, I just need to 40k up this model. Um, there's a fuel tank, I wonder where the bottom half of that is. That's an old metal one off a Chimera that became a hellhound. Uh, I've got these metal plates and bits and pieces. Oh, they might be, might be cool for, I've got to make a set of stairs, a couple of stairs up. And those are the right kind of texture for that. Yeah, I don't know what I'm looking for really. I need a plan, I need to come up with a plan. I haven't got a plan. Just jump. I'm just looking for cool things that will change and disguise the Playmobilness. There uh, we go. Still in a bag. I don't even know what company that's come from. I think that's from Crooked Dice. It's an air conditioning unit, actually. In the CAC, Crooked Dice Miniatures Resin Piece, that'll go on quite nicely somewhere. That'll help. There we go, oh, that's a cool thing. Right, I don't know what that is from, but look, it's a metal grill thing. And actually that, I think, hanging up with weapons, hang on it, will be the perfect weapons rack for inside in the armory that's going to happen cool come on still want stuff for the superstructure okay. that's weird because i'm now doing just random stuff i can't settle on anything today so i'm literally just looking through cat boxes trying to find things that kind of strike me as being oh good oh cool look 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 that's fine but that See that? That's the bottom of one of those fuel tanks from earlier. That's cool. That's going to end up on the model somewhere. Don't know where, but gas got to be done. So this is all just messing around now. I'm playing about. I've got it's a round thing down here, which adds some bit of Playmobil tech on it. And I've come decided if I'm going to have this bit of piping, which works quite well. I'm quite tempted to use this one. And this is all the fun of making this kind of model. It's just playing around and trying stuff out. But I think that's going to work much better.
So I'm gonna have this and this off the sprue and stick that in. I think that works better. It'll just be more interesting to paint. I want to stick up as high in front of the uh, um, open walkway either. It's gonna be pretty neat. This is all this level of detail. This model is crying out for just tons of detail. At the end of this video, I'll be painting it, the model, and I will be complaining like a crying school child with the amount of detail and how much painting I've got to do, but it's got to be worth it. got to be worth it. What will probably happen is I'll end up doing a very basic paint job, and then I'll come back <laughs> so I can get the model finished, and then I'll keep coming back to it and adding extra stuff. It's going to be done with a lot of spray paint, I would imagine, to start off with, and a lot of rust effects, but, you know, we'll see. Okay, so one of the cool things I like about doing what I do is the number of people who watch and then make ideas and contributions. Sometimes you're kind of like already coming up with things that I've already come up with, which is cool, because I'm like, ah, you wait until I see, see what I'm going to do. But in other cases, I get people make really cool suggestions. And uh, Shiro, who was watching, suggested I have some kind of bay window type guard position here next to this door, which is really cool. So that's what I'm gonna kinda of like work on now. So thanks for that, that was a cool idea, man. Um, and I think I'm gonna use uh, some upside down stuff from the, uh, um, uh, the the fortress, the gang fort, because I reckon that would go across there nicely with a bit of flooring out there. Uh, you can have a guy out there covering the door. That would be a really cool idea. So that's what I'm gonna have a crack at doing now. Okay, so I'm gonna chop out this rail and using these bits we're going to do exactly that we're going to have a guard basket it's quite cool is upside down this way around this is going to glue really nicely onto the side so should be pretty well supported yes trim that Okay, so sadly, unfortunately, I stuck this on here, but then trying to figure on it and putting in the railings, it kind of works, but doesn't. I think, well, I didn't want to, I think I'm going to have to cut out this bit here and have this lower down. Um, I didn't really want to do that, I want it high up, but it's, the physics of it just wouldn't work for the crew man. So from that point of view, I'm going to have to have it lowered down. So I'm going to have to cut this out. Um, I'm wondering where I can do that with the craft knife rather than the Dremel, like I did here. But if this works, I really fancy doing it on the one over the back as well, by the on the other side of the engineer's bay. So I'm going to try this out here and see how it goes. Okay, so this is a, a work in progress update, I suppose, because I've done I've done loads of little bits um, uh, and some bigger bits. Uh, you can see the crane, which is you can see an alien head in the background, but you can see a crane, uh, which is now sitting on top of the uh, bridge. That's designed there for loading and unloading. Uh, supplies off supply barges and also picking up land um, lump sump speeders and putting them down in the work bay rather than having to drive up and down the ramp that's quite cool I'm quite pleased with that that was a just a really straightforward build and fit at the base to the roof of the uh, um, bridge I'm leaving the crane off separate so I can twist and turn it and so it's going to be easier to pack and probably easier to paint as well um, okay, what else we got? Of course, that will make it vulnerable when playing games. I don't want to knock the damn thing over all the time. Okay, so I've now done this little kind of um, enforcer post next to the, the doorway. Um, so he can stand on there, uh, which works quite nicely. It could really do with a heavy weapon on here, though. Some kind of pintle mounted fixed weapon to oversee to guard the uh, the landing station here. Um on the front, 
I do have this rotating twin link LAS cannon. I'm really pleased with the structure of that. It's going to be quite intimidating. Uh, that's quite neat. That sits underneath the gunner here. would have to sit right here to make that work. There's no weaponry on the back side of this. I have added a few things, mind you. Let's just come down here. Uh, this is the front of the um, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. Dune Rider, when it's in its, I oh no, tanky version. It's just a big set of ball bars that goes on there, and that works really quite nicely there. As you can now see, I've got the landing pad, armour-plated crenellations all the way along here. This is really adding to the overall look of the things. Lots more protection, making this look more like um, a fortification. I've got more of these plastic panels that are uh, taken away from the flat surfaces of the Playmobil and that's on inside and out. I've added uh, this aircon unit here, this is from Crooked Dice and um, that vent over the rope hole there. The chains are now super glued down to the board and this is all going to be sumped up so that chain will be just going down into the water. My next big concern is the after the vessel because again there's no weapon system protecting the back of this and it's very vulnerable because all these ladders. Um, it is a shame, I had a number of people uh, mention on the first one about the locations of the ladders. I would have loved for the ladders here to have run up the outside and either side but I wanted to have this four smaller four bulkhead pattern on the outside. And it's not the same on the other side. It's a, a solid single piece, which means I could have had the ladder the other way around. So um, for those of you who are a bit OCD out there, me included, I do apologise. That ain't going to be the way it works. Now, I need to come up with a weapon system to go on the back here. Um, and I want a turret-mounted weapon of some kind or another. So I think I'm going to work on that. I'll either mount it here or actually up here on the back of the med bay kind of area. So it's high up, not quite as vulnerable um, to incoming uh, attack. Then there are tiny little details. I've added a pair of steps up from the walkway here, up onto this uh, first floor level. So I take that off there. They then stay in place if I remove that layer like that, which is quite cool. I've now added loads of detail. I'm still adding all sorts of things as I'm going. One thing I haven't done is put any detail inside uh, the uh, accommodation at the back. That's partly because I've ordered some resin pieces from a company called Ainsty Castings that are hopefully are going to supply me with a few bits, uh, a med bed and various other bits and pieces, but I have got other things to work out. So I'm going to work on some of the details that's going to go in there. Um, but uh, with some of those, they're going to end up being things I'm going to make and going to have to paint and then stick in because painting them in situ is going to be really, really awkward. Next, then I'm going to add the plates on the back over here. And then I'm going to work out a weapon system to go on the back of the vessel and on the uh, little cupola uh, balcony that overlooks the landing pontoons. Let's see what we can do with those. Okay, this is a very simple uh, weapon system, a twin linked, I think they're auto cannons, aren't they? Um, and these, I think, are from the uh, Goliath, the Gene Steeler Colt vehicle. A pair of those uh, mounted on a bit of plastic component from the land speeder storm that I haven't used on the sump speeder and that is just going to sit in here and it's not going to be movable when it's stuck on it's stuck on and that's it but it's going to sit there as a very intimidating twin link weapon giving a good field of fire to anybody who approaches the landing point, point on this side of the sector house. Here I've been messing around with something else. I'm working on this as an idea. Um, for the stern of the boat, maybe on the back of the med bay. Let's bring that over here. 
Or I can mount this lift platform here maybe, or even higher up. Um, or just above the piping on the back. And then using this bit of thing, which is a shame because of course it's got a fan in it and the rest of it, but that's quite nice, I like that. And then this is the turret, spare turret from the uh, Dune Rider. It's now got an Enforcer gunner sat inside it. Obviously no legs, but that I think mounted on the back. Again, quite an intimidating looking weapon system designed to put off big vessels coming too close uh, to the stern of the vehicle. Then the only side of the vehicle that is uh, of the vessel that is vulnerable really is this side over here, which could do with some kind of wall mounted guns here, I suppose. Um, oh, I keep thinking on that. I'm going to play around, play around with this and see if I can make this work. This might be pretty cool. I'll leave that turret, I think, separate so I can play around with it and move it from side to side. It's pretty neat. More wall painting. Mm. Now, as I've already said, um, this side has got zero defence on it at all, which is a bit concerning. Um, I mean, from a gameplay point of view, it doesn't matter at all, but I quite just like the fact that this is a big fortification on the sump and would be vulnerable to big gang attacks, so it needs to, you know, some defence all the way around. Um, and uh, this solution that I've come up with is not clever at all, because all I've done is found something that was kicking around in a bits box. This is a heavy bolt of turret off an ancient um, orc uh, war wagon that I built years and years ago. Built based on an old war wagon anyway, and it's got a little hatch on the top and a sponson mounted heavy bolter. Now if I can find a way of mounting this on the side here, um, I'm just going to have it as an automated heavy bolter turret. And in fact, because then the hatch just allows uh, the service crew to get to put new ammunition in bits and pieces. And I think I've got just the thing, because on this sprue, I've got that right angle pipe there and obviously the other side of it and if I stick both of those together and stick them coming out here then it will sit up there go black 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 now the only problem is of course is the fact that it's sticking out over the side of the uh, model which is awkward from a storage point of view um, which is possibly the other reason why there is no <laughs> defences on this side of the model because there's nowhere for them to go. Everything is pretty much over the top. Um, but it might be quite cool. Either that, I might mount it on the wall of the tower. Don't know. I'm going to have a go, see what it looks like, and then decide whether I'm going to keep it or not. Okay, so thinking about the door to the... Uh, um, whole structure and I was going to go with the door from the gang stronghold but I ain't going to work so I think I'm going to use a container end I'm going to take off those two hinges at the bottom have it just so I can put it in place in fact I'll put a solid little thing so it stand up and then if I want to remove it I'll just take it out I'm not going to do anything fancy with that but it will look pretty cool when it's kind of done there and it doesn't matter if there are gaps on either side because that's where sump water or blood or ooze or whatever can squeeze out the sides nobody will be able to get through it okay so all i've done is cut the hinges off the bottom cut out a bit of sprue that fits nicely there that was just hopefully help it stand up stand in place i've got two lift tops i've used the lifts in other places um i haven't used them as lifts yet on any of the actual so more tireless top tiles so but they make quite good kind of like sides that entrance way there so the side of this now is looking quite cool. I reckon I'm in the position where I could paint this up now. Get going with this so I could start to paint. In fact, I really need to because the paint job is going to take fucking ages. Okay, so that's the doorway in place and standing up. And if you want to take it out, I just can. And then you come across here. And that is a pair of twin-linked auto cannons with a gunner. 
That looks pretty imposing there, actually. I quite like that. There we go on the back. It's my little gun turret. I haven't stuck it on yet. All I've done is stuck on this um, platform, which is going to need some supporting underneath, I think, or some more bulking out. But the idea very much is the fact the gunner climbs, climbs down this ladder and hops into the top there. It's a self-contained system then. It needs some pipes and bits and pieces to make it work really, really well. But basically the top of the turret, I'm going to move this out far enough. So the, the turret will just be able to swivel slightly side to side. Bracket, 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 kind of thing. That works. And I've decided to leave this back side clear. I don't want anything sticking out the back of the model. It'll stop me putting it away. It'll just get knocked off um, when it gets moved around and packed up. So the, this side of it is going to have to be defended by mobile heavy weapons. Um, but that's fine from a gaming point of view. That's really cool. I don't like that at all. So here we are. <clears throat> adding the sump. I've got various things I've got to do to this model still, but one of the jobs I want to do late at night in the warm is add the sump water. Uh, to the model because it will dry overnight then and uh, if you haven't seen my sump wall videos this is how I do the sump water now you might also notice there's an awful lot of white on this because I've been sprinkling on bicarbonate soda onto super glue to get it to stick and make rust and anywhere it kind of drops off it doesn't matter so my method for making the sump water is pretty straightforward. It involves Mod Podge brushed onto the surface of the plywood. Then a sheet of tissue paper. Torn is fine. In fact, I'm going to tear it down the edge there roughly. Onto that mod podge. I'm laying it over the top of the field bits. In most cases, it goes up against the side of the ship. Oh my, it doesn't matter. I want it to get wrinkled up because that's going to make the surface of the sump. And then I'm going to mod podge on top of it. And I'm going to do that all the way around the model. That way there, the tissue paper soaks up the Mod Podge. The wrinkle, it takes up the wrinkles. What I'm then probably going to do when I've Mod Podged the whole thing and I've tissue papered the whole thing, I'll end up getting the flexible filler out that I went around the ship with, which and I'm going to put that in around the oil drums here. So they've got sump up around them as well, so they're not sitting so high up on the uh, top of the surface. I'm going to then leave it all to dry and then tomorrow I'll take a scalpel blade or standing knife trim off the edges here to get my flush fit oh, there you go so I'm going to go all the way around the model like that that way there I get a bit of a ripple get a bit of texture on the surface of the sump without having to do anything too complicated and it will paint up nicely uh, when I undercoat the whole model there we go I'll show you when it's all done <coughs> alright it looks really messy right now but that's the uh, um, sump water on and you can see lots of goo all over the place which is solid bicarbonate and soda Super glue on a lot of rust on this. I want it to be having sat out on the sump and just going manky all the time. So there's a lot of that. We've used filler around all the barrels so they sunk down in the water a little bit more and filler over the chains in the sump so they're kind of like definitely in and pulling there. So I can let all that dry. Then this whole bottom the tissue paper and the sump water is all going to get one more coat of Mod Podge in an hour or two's time and then um, leave that to dry and then I'm going to spray it all. Better get on with the painting.
and I'm going to worry about the interior details, which I haven't done at all yet. Never know, that might even become a third video. Who knows? Okay, so we are out in the spray booth in the garage. Cold this evening, but, you know, can't do anything about that. That happens to be the time of year. This is, as I've said before, is one of my favourite bits of making a model. When you apply that first layer of primer... And that will help, really, really help blend all this stuff together. We see how we go. So let the magic begin. I've already given the can a good shake. And now we're going to use our black primer. This is literally just Halford's black. This is a satin black because that's all they had. Priming spray start really working on this model now obviously this is only the main superstructure there isn't the uh, entrance archway the staircase isn't on there and none of the main uh, the floors of the tower on there I'm going to spray all those separately but I'm so excited it's ridiculous it's going to be a massive paint job as well I don't know how much I'm going to really enjoy this but We'll see. Saying that, a lot of it's going to be done with rattle cans. So uh, we're going to go metal next with this. <laughs> Here we've got some of the other components. The entrance arch. The uh, staircase. The control. Water tower. Front door. Back gun sponson. And give it all a light of dust in the black. It's all going to need metallic as well. So, so we have come to the end of this second part of this build. Originally, when I started this series making the the precinct, I thought it was going to be two videos, but this uh, second week has been um, huge uh, from a building point of view, and um, uh, loads of details gone on, and the whole thing is now assembled. Uh, and painted, uh, primed and uh, sprayed up with metallic paints so I can get on with the paint job. But actually, that's as far as I've got. Loads of detail, finishing the model, uh, spraying and priming, ready to go. I haven't added lots of the tiny little details and it needs a proper paint job and more crew members as well. Um, so I'm going to have to do a third video. Uh, which is going to be about the painting of this and about the actual people on board and, and adding all the details like um, the med bay and the commander's cabin and the prison cell and the armory, that kind of thing. I've been kind of like let down by the weather, all the snow this week. Uh, we've had virtually no post and some bits that I've ordered to go onto this model haven't arrived yet. So from that point of view, it just couldn't happen. So... Um, I'm sorry that it's going over to three videos, although I'm not because it means I could spend more time doing the painting video as its own thing because it's quite a, a mammoth thing. You'll notice uh, over here glaringly at the back, there's this white bit of roof. Um, this is the only bit that is not primed and ready to go. This is a new roof for the commander's cabin, um, mostly because I've lost the original one. I took it out to the garage to spray it up with everything else and then I've fucking gone and lost it. Um, so I made I had to make a new one. Um, but a bit like my, my mum's attitude when it came to kind of making things in Lego, you make it the second time you make it, it's better. And actually, I'm happier with that roof, so that's that's fine. I've got to spray that up as well. Right, come over here. We'll have a closer look at the model as it is right now. Okay, so this is where we are at, at the um, pretty much construction stage complete. Like I said, I've got little details and scattered terrain and things to add to it, but apart from that, the main build is definitely, definitely done now. We're all metallic, um, which is a bit that I love because it now looks like it's all one model and it's really kind of come together well. So stuff we've definitely added and I've enjoyed adding this week are things like this crane that are going to be just right for lifting up things like um, sump speeders and putting them down into the work bay or loading supplies from supply barges into the vessel. Um uh, old friend of mine, Richard Gunson, who used to work for, with uh, Games Workshop when I did, uh, quite rightly pointed out there's a good chance that the actual structure of this conning tower here probably couldn't hold up 
this bloody great big crane. But hey, it's a fantasy game and it looks cool. So, you know, when has the physics of anything ever got in the way of people who design things for Warhammer 40,000 and Necromunda? Um, so, yeah, it's quite cool. I've left this separate so I could take it off, pack it away easier. That does, of course, mean that it will get knocked over and fall down um, a lot in gameplay. But it means I could swivel it around and make it look pretty in different places as I'm playing, which is also pretty cool. So I like that. Works really neatly. Um, the front archway, again, is not still not stuck on. I've not stuck in these main features because I want to be able to get my hands inside to paint the model. Um, so it's not stuck on, but it works really well. And like we said earlier in the video, I'm very pleased with the twinkling glass cannon that's on there. I'm really pleased with how all my rust patches and bits and pieces have come out. The metal work in other places is still quite neat, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. Um, by the time I've added uh, some technical paints and bits and pieces and, and other things, sterling mud and stuff that will have more uh, mud and grit and horribleness in it um, this is going to look quite quite manky um, let's turn it around and have a look at the aft of the vessel this side of the vessel looks a little bit neater it could do with more rust and a bit more grot on this side and i'll add that with like i said with the uh, sterling mud and other technical paints uh, and down here on the outside of the tower but it does look pretty nice i'm pleased with this little back gun turret i really do envisage uh, a guy just kind of like coming down a ladder and hopping out and climbing into this turret and it kind of like sitting and swiveling around and firing away at the back it doesn't have to be anything particularly complicated or sophisticated but it is quite a big weapon to sit and blat away at, at vessels incoming so that's quite a cool thing um the admin tower is as it is at the moment there was uh, a, a conversation on comments on the last video about the fact that these bottom panels uh that aren't the same and this ladder here could have gone up the outside but i'd have to change around the panels and it wouldn't work i like that, that kind of panel so i'm really very happy with this um i think this is going to be absolutely cracking the view from above then looks pretty cool i'm quite pleased with this the sump rider is sat there that sits really nicely that features really well i've got room for two actually if they're in tight uh but uh yeah the, there's plenty of levels and staircases and things to climb up and down there's definitely enough on this model to have a game just on this one one foot by two foot tile i mean it'll be a really kind of like tricky game might be just one figure creeping around trying to break in or break out or something like that but it'd be pretty cool i'm a bit daunted by the idea of the paint job for this model because there is actually so much to paint um i love making models and buildings the painting of it sometimes I see as a bit of a, a fag. So from that point of view, um, I'm hoping it's not going to be too painful. Uh, the metallic paint on this is really going to help. Uh, I'll then go with a great big Mournfang brown dry brush to add loads of rust and then start picking bits and pieces out. And we'll see how we get on from that point of view. But I'm very happy with the main construction. I just need to get on with the detail in the painting. So that's part two complete. I hope you like the build so far. Um... I've got a few things before we go. First of all, obviously, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe. Um, you're going to miss the third part, the, the bit where it all finishes off and I get to put it together on a, on a table with other things. And you don't want to do that. So click subscribe. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, that means there's a whole bunch of Necromunda videos and other things you can go back and watch too. Please do also leave comments down below. I love to know what you think of my model making. Um, I love to know what you think of the progress so far on this video. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, an old friend of mine, Reese. Uh, Reese is tonight's digging through the CAC special guest. Reese and I worked together at Games Workshop South End in 1995-96. Um, and this channel has got us back in contact. So from that point of view, that's really cool. So thanks very much for that, Reese. That's really cool. And if anybody else would like to drop me a digging through the CAC video and appear in a Magathea uh, video as a guest CAC digger, then just drop me a message on my Facebook page at Magathea Models. And that'll be really cool. I'd love to have you. Um, if you want a digging through the CAC t-shirt, go over to the Facebook page as well. All the details are there. Uh, and you can then join an elite group of CAC diggers. Um, I'm really happy with how this build has been going. I'm delighted with how popular the last video was. Um, I've had 150 odd new subscribers from that last video, and it's been my biggest video for some time. Um, 
for a little guy like me, I'm absolutely blown away by the number of people who are enjoying watching my videos. So thanks again very much for your support. Um, I, uh, I don't know what's going to come next in the line of, of videos um, because I do have to get on with the commission build. And until um, this stuff turns up for me to detail the inside of this model, I can't actually get it completed anyway. I need new, more crew um, and I need detailed stuff to go in the admin tower. So there might be other videos in between um, this tonight's video and the final part of this build. I've got a Wild West Town 40mm scenery showcase to, to produce and some Burrows and Badgers commission stuff. So uh, you'll have to watch this space and see what happens next. Hopefully I want to get this done and finished because I want to get on with other Necromunda projects. There are so many things now that have kind of like spun off this one way or another. So thanks very much for watching Magathea of Builder Worlds. I'll see you next time out on the sump or somewhere else. Who knows? Thanks for watching.